Hey everyone, so this video is going to be covering how to conduct a search mission or searching fire on the M16 plotting board. As you can tell on the screen, I do not have the plotting board in front of me um, due to the simple fact that we have already covered everything that you're going to need to know. Um, the end state is that we're going to be adjusting our impacts of our rounds to the center mass of our target area and then everything else is going to be conducted either through formulas and just gathering data through the tabular firing tables. All right, so nothing too crazy here. Um, just some things to think about when it pertaining to how to conduct a search mission. Now, the first things first is understanding why we would go ahead and conduct such a mission. Now, understanding that mortars can cover area targets more than 50 meters in length by either elevating or depressing the barrel during that fire for effect phase. So everything that we're doing, like I said, we're adjusting to the center mass of that target for our adjustment phase. And as soon as we get to the fire for effect, that's when we're starting to manipulate our elevation hand crank on our bipod assembly to be able to achieve that entire target length or target area. All right, now when it talks about elevating or depressing, what I mean by this is depending on what you want to do with search up or search down. Okay, so if we're doing a search up, everything that we do is in relationship to how our barrel is moving. Okay, so if we're searching up, that means our barrel is coming up towards us, meaning that we are starting at the far edge of the target and we are elevating up. Our barrel is coming towards us and our rounds or impacts are walking towards us to the near edge of that target area. Now, quite the opposite, search down. We're starting at the near edge of that target area. We're manipulating our elevation down to get our impacts to go further in range. That barrel is lowering. And we're ending at the far edge of our target area. When it comes to conducting search missions, I'll tell you, the easiest way to conduct this is as soon as you get to the fire for effect phase as the FDC is automatically just go ahead and act like you're about to conduct a search up mission. And I'll tell you two reasons why. First one, search up is the easiest way to have the observer observe those rounds because it is starting further away from him and he is able to observe those rounds as they walk towards him. Second thing being, when it comes to a search up, like I said before, you're starting at the far edge range. So you need to figure out or compute your command far edge range and then be able to get the formula for that. Now what's that? what that's going to do, when you'll see here through the slides, is deconflict a possible charge change, and that's what you want to alleviate from this whole mess. All right, because the last thing you want to do is have to flip a charge in the middle of your search mission, because it's going to give you some some funky data to work with with your formulas. All right, so the end state is we're going to start with our search up. Compute our information. I'll walk you through how to still do a search down. And then we're going to try to alleviate having to do a charge change for us. All right, so you've had this setup data in front of you for some quite, quite some time. So we're still using 81s for this. Um, I have updated everything to be 800 series. So if you have 800 series firing table, uh, we will be utilizing the M821 for this. So you can follow along. You have your easting of 0335, a northing of 6950 with a mortar position altitude of 490, a direction of fire of 5040 with a mounting azimuth of 5050 and a refer deflection of 2800 and our grid intersection of 0269. All right, now because we're working with our advanced missions now, we're gonna be talking about our attitudes. 
Do I have a gun attitude or a mortar position attitude of 0510? And all that's saying is from four gun to one gun, I have an azimuth of 0510. All right, so if I were to walk or run all the way to four gun, look down my gun line to one gun, shoot that azimuth across my gun line, that would give me my attitude of 0510. All right, we do have a forward plot of RP1. It's just a standard target, nothing too fancy here with a chart deflection of 2810, a chart range of 3175. That targets altitude of 440, a vertical interval of negative 50. We divided that by two to get our altitude correction of negative 25 with a command deflection of 2810, a command range of 3150, charge two, the corresponding elevation of 0984. All right, so that's all of our four plot data. So everything that we're gonna be doing from this for the search mission is just a standard shift mission from this RP-1. So moving over to our computer's record. Our observer comes over, says adjust fire, shift from RP-1. Gives us an OT direction of 5130, a right correction of 200, add 300, and a vertical shift of up 100. Our target description is a battalion CP, tells us the length is 300, the width is 140, and our attitude is 1900. Now, like I said prior, attitude is that new word that we've just been told. I kind of talked about what it was for our mortar position. Let's elaborate more on it and what it actually means. So attitude of the target is the direction or that azimuth from north in mills of a linear or rectangular target along its long axis. It is used with the target length and width to enable the computation of data to provide a special sheaf or determination of multiple aiming points to engage the total target area. So to simplify this, all right, we have some three things here. All it is is a direction through the long axis of the gun section or target. Attitude is always determined to the nearest 100 mils, and attitude is always less than 3,200 mils. So always less than 3,200 mils, meaning we want that, if we're thinking about 6,400 mils, that circle being a pie, we're trying to get the azimuth portion of the pie to be that small chunk and not the entire pie. So just a small piece of the pie, not the entire pie. All right, so you see we have our target area in front of us. We have our mortar position here with a mounting azimuth of 5050. We have a target attitude of 1900 and your little north arrow to depict where north is. Now, depending on what branch you're in, you're gonna have this portrayed to you a few different ways. But I promise you the end state is the same. Now you can do this either comparing your target attitude within 100 mils of your mounting azimuth. Okay, so meaning these two numbers have to be within 100 mils of each other. Or you can compare the target attitude being perpendicular to your mortar position attitude. All right, so you just have to take your mortar position attitude, subtract that 1600 mils to give you a perpendicular azimuth, which would be then trying to obtain 100 mils of your target attitude.
All right, but for here, we're going to be comparing the target attitude, trying to get that within 100 mils of our mounting azimuth. So that target attitude of 1900 is less than 3200. Now we're gonna compare it to a mounting azimuth of 5050. Now first things first, we have to add 3200 to this azimuth. So essentially we're trying to obtain the back azimuth of it. So if I add 3200 to 1900 of that target attitude, it's going to give me a new attitude of 5100. Now I can compare that 51 to that mounting azimuth and I get a difference of 50 mils. Because it's in, within 100, I know that I can achieve effects on my, target, my entire target area that can conduct a search mission. Now here's some little scenarios. To the left is what we're trying to achieve. That's why we want our azimuth or our attitudes to be within 100, me 100 mils. Because if we don't, then you're gonna get that depiction to your right hand side. And that's not what we want because you're not covering the entire target area. So let's move into our FTC order. So everything that we're doing here is just like everything else that we've done up until our method of fire for effect because we have to figure out how many rounds we're going to need based on our target length. So we know our target length is 200. Let's move into our formulas. So we have for 81s, one round can cover 30 meters, four rounds can cover 100. Just so everyone's aware, if you're dealing with 60s, one round can cover 15 meters, eight rounds can cover 100, and then 120s, one round can cover 60 meters, two rounds can cover 100. All right, so that's what you would use depending on what weapon system, but we're using 81s. So we're going to be doing one round is 30 and four rounds for 100. Now based on our target length, we know, let me go back, sorry. We're trying to achieve 200 meters. So we know four rounds cover, covers 100. We just multiply four by two to give us a total of 200. So our fire for effect is going to be eight rounds. We're gonna go ahead and conduct that one ready. All right, so when you compute your initial chart data, you should have a Initial chart deflection of 2745. Then initial azimuth of 5105 off your veneer scale. Angle T of 30, so it's not in effect. Initial chart range of 3475, which will give you a vertical interval of positive 50, a positive 25 altitude correction. A command range of 3,500, which, like I, like I said, M821, our lowest charge of 3, our max order of 2138, time of flight of 42.1. Moving into our initial fire command, we have section firing HE quick, 2, 1 round in the adjust, 8 rounds. We'll do procs in the fire for effect. Deflection of 2745, charge 3, elevation of 1152. 
We fire that first round. So we're hanging out at our OT direction. Now, like I said prior to this, all we're doing is adjusting these rounds to the center mass of our target area. It's so the center point of our target area. Bring our altitude correction down. Our observer comes back with the left two five, drop five zero, fire for effect. So I'm still going to pull my final chart data. I have a final chart deflection of 2750. Final chart range of 3400. I know my mortar to fire is going to be my entire section. Firing eight rounds prox, bringing that deflection over. Now I need to figure out all of my search data. Like I said, I'm always going to determine this initial data based off of a search up because I want to go for the furthest range so I'm not or so I am deconflicting any possibility of a charge change throughout this mission. So in order to search up, like I already briefed before, you're starting at that far edge of the target. You're using the command range and elevation to the far edge. As the guns elevate, the rounds will decrease in range. So all it's saying is it's in relationship to the barrel. So if I'm searching up, I'm elevating, my barrel is coming up towards me. So my rounds are coming towards me, that right range is decreasing. It's just showing you exactly what's happening. So let's first search up. Some animation so you get a visual. In between the manipulating that elevation hand crank going up and those rounds are walking towards them. Now searching down is just the opposite. So I'm starting at the near edge of my target. I'm using my command range and elevation to the nearest edge. As the guns depress, the rounds will increase in range. So that's your search down. Here's your animation. So they're decreasing or depressing that elevation hand crank on their bipod. Each individual round is walking further in range. Now, key thing to note when you're talking about manipulation of the bipod, all right? I'm searching, so I'm trying to get this line or impacts my rain, my rounds to continue going as straight as possible. All right, so although I'm manipulating my elevation hand crank, my elevation bubble will go out of whack, but I still need to obtain my cross level bubble and keep that floating throughout this entire mission. All right, so just a side note for all my gun monkeys on the gun line. All right, so I need to obtain my far edge. In order to find my far edge, I'm going to use my final chart range and I'm going to add half of my total depth of the target area and apply any altitude or range corrections that I have. All right, so think about this. Our final chart range that gets us to center mass. Because I want to find the far edge, I'm going to add half of my target area. All right, because that's why we're adding. So once I add that number, that's going to give me my far edge range. Then I'm going to apply altitude corrections to give me my far edge command range. Now just the opposite from our near edge. So my near edge is what I would find if I'm doing a search down. So I would use my final chart range then subtract half of my total depth because I'm adjusted to my center mass. I need to figure out that nearest point of my target area. So I'm subtracting half the total depth of the target area and then applying those corrections. All right, 
So our final chart range was 3,400 meters. Half of our target length, so we had a target length of 200. Half of that is 100. I'm going to add, because I'm trying to go to the far edge, to get 3,500 meters. I have an altitude correction of positive 25. So I'm going to apply that altitude correction to get a far edge. That's my command range of 3525. All right, so now I have my command range of 3525 up there. Now, biggest thing here, if you look in your firing tables, when it comes to determining number of turns, we're gonna enter our firing table at the final chart range to get our number of turns. However, if the final chart range and the far edge command range do not fall within the same charge, you must use the charge for the far edge command range. What this means, if I look at the M821, I'm in table D, I find my final chart range of 3,400. That is going to be the lowest charge of charge two, okay? If I look for my far edge command range of 3,525, charge two cannot obtain that. So in order to prevent a charge change midway through my search mission, I'm going to bump my charge up to charge three. That way I'm going to remain in charge three the entire time. So I know I'm entering at my final chart range of 3,400. I'm in table D at charge three. I'm gonna to go to column four, which is my approximate number of turns per 100 meters. Where those two intersect gives me two. So I have two turns per 100 meters. I need to go back to my formula. So I take that 34. I just got the number from column four of my firing table. Approximate number of turns per 100 meters of two. I got to take that 3400. Or correction, I need to take the area to be covered, which is 200 meters, express that in one hundredths, which gives me two. Multiply those two, gives me the total number of turns per gun. All right, so each gun will be turning a total of four turns. Now, number of intervals. The number of intervals is one less than the number of rounds in the fire for effect. So remember our fire for effect, we said four rounds could cover 100 meters. We needed to cover 200 meters. So we had eight rounds in the fire for effect. We minus that one, it gives us seven intervals. All right, then lastly, our number of turns between rounds. So divide our turns that we just figured out of four from here by our intervals from here. We're gonna take that sum, which is 0 0.57 and round it to the nearest half turn, which 0.57, we just round that to 0.5. All right, so half a turn. All that means is each gun is going to be manipulating their elevation. So they're gonna fire half turn, fire, until their rounds complete with their total of four rounds. All right, so now I know I have a half a turn. I got that corresponding elevation of charge three from 3525 to get an elevation of 1148. I know all guns are firing, give me 33 HE in total. So they fire. 
once again, they have eight rounds total. That's 32 with the one that we had for our adjustment phase. Fire preserver comes back after those 33 rounds are fired. It says end of mission, estimated 30% casualties. So I can move back into my data sheet. I can update all of my chart data, my command data, with my intel and rounds expended. Just to recap, everything that we did. All right, so we take our center mass. The far left it shows you was 200 meters. I adjusted to that center mass. I did a search up, so I needed to figure out what my far edge range is. So I'm gonna use my final chart range, then add half of that total depth, so that 100, and apply any range or altitude corrections. Same thing, but just the opposite for my near edge. Take that final chart range, subtract half the total depth of my target area, and then apply any range or altitude corrections. So that's everything that we did. The biggest note here is using my far edge charge throughout the entire mission. So we try to minimize a charge change halfway through. Then we're entering the firing table at our final chart range, because that's center mass. Go to column four and table D to get the number of total number of turns per 100 meters. And then you figure out the rest of your data with your formulas. All right, so just to summarize everything real quick. The biggest thing to understand is everything for a search mission is in relationship to your mounting azimuth or perpendicular to your gun attitude. All right, so our target attitude has to be 100 mils within our mounting azimuth or 100 mils perpendicular to our gun attitude. So once we've just figured out that we're conducting a search mission. It's good, it's with wind 100. I'm going to adjust to center mass my target area. And then when I get to my fire for effect phase, that's when I need to the total number of turns, my intervals, and then turns between rounds. Once I have all of that figured out with my formulas, then I can go ahead. I'm going to pass that information to the guns. They fire. And then I can go ahead and wait for a BDA of my observer. Now, just to recap, when it comes to rounds needed to cover an area, if I'm using 60s, one round can cover 15 meters. Eight rounds can cover 100. 81s was one round covers 30 meters. Four rounds covers 100. And 120s is one round covers 60 meters. And two rounds cover 100 meters. All right, just as always, if you have any questions on how to conduct searching fire for this search mission, please feel free to reach out to me on here on YouTube or hit up my Instagram. If you want to continue seeing these videos, feel free to like and subscribe.